Good morning and welcome. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church. This is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, and I am Pastor Eric Swanson. Welcome to worship. Let us join together for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be one God, the Creator whose voice is upon the waters, the Savior whose mercy is for all people, and the Spirit whose goodness moves over all creation. Amen. We confess our sin, trusting in God's abundant grace. Holy God, you search us and know us. You know all our ways. Your Son commanded us to love you and to love our neighbor. But we have failed to follow your way. We have turned inward and become selfish. We have committed sins of our own, and we participate in sinful systems that are broken, unjust, and unfair. We distrust people who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources. And we ignore the needs of those who come after us. We confess all our sin to you and ask that you remove this burden that holds us down. Forgive us, gracious God, for all that we have done and all that we have left undone. Amen. Friends in Christ, hear this word of hope. God's grace and forgiveness are immense. Through the power and promise of Jesus Christ, our sins are washed away. We are truly forgiven and claimed as God's beloved. Now, living as God's forgiven people, we are called to live as his beloved community, to shine with the light of Christ, and to bear Christ's justice and peace to all the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence, and you continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken, and speak truth to us in our confusion, so that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, 
If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by who all delight in them. Majesty and splendor, mark your deeds and your righteousness, endurance forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. covenant. You've shown your people the power of your works and giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You send redemption to your people and commanding your covenant forever, holy and awesome in your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is only there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and we are no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in a temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family, and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The Word of the Lord. Good morning. 
uh, Cora and I want to show you guys uh, something that the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade youth group uh, worked on this past Wednesday. So I gave them this sheet that says, uh, it's a God hunt. So it, it's different uh, scripture readings that they have to uh, find these books of the Bible and these verses, and they have to read them. And then they are to tell me what um, it's saying about God is blank. So it is a God hunt. It says, look up the following Bible verses that speak of God's character. So I challenge each of you to look up the verses that is on this piece of paper. And this paper, um, there, there will be a link that you can just tap on this uh, PDF and get it and print it off. And then uh, go into the Bible, read the verses, and tell me if we get the same words. Um, so that is something we challenge you to do. Um, we think it's great to uh, open up the Bible, learn more about the books of the Bible, where they're at, how many there are, and um, how big. Some are, are a lot longer than others. Um, so that's what I encourage you each to do. And we can kind of see if we get the same uh, answers because we know God is so many things, so many wonderful things, and we love to learn about him. So do you want to pray with me, Cor? Yeah. Dear God, dear God, we are excited. We are excited to learn, to learn more about you. More about you. Help us. Help us to explore, to explore the Bible. Bible more often. More often because, because learning, learning about you, about you makes us happy. Makes us happy. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In our world, it seems like there's a lot of labeling we do with people. We slap some name on them or stick them in a category, and once we have them there, we think we've got them locked in. So we stick labels on people like liberal or conservative, socialist, progressive, reactionary, extremist, or terrorist. And the names, the labels, they fly all over the place, and, and once we've defined them, once we've shoved somebody into the box, then we no longer need to know them or care about them. At that point, they're not really a person. They're just a label. They're just one of those. This whole thing about naming and labeling, it's really part of our gospel story today. Naming and labeling, it's an attempt to try to force the person off to the side and out of the way and then just, just deal with the label. Earlier, right before today's gospel reading, Jesus had just called some followers, Simon and Andrew and then James and John, and now Jesus goes with them and they've traveled to Capernaum. And on the Sabbath day, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. 
people were astounded when they heard the words from Jesus, when they heard what he said, because Jesus taught as one with authority. Jesus spoke the truth about God. Jesus spoke the truth of God present for them right here, right now, in the moment as he's speaking, God is present in the words that Jesus speaks. But just then, a man appeared. A man who is possessed by an unclean spirit into this holy space, the synagogue, on this holy day, the Sabbath, when this holy man of God, Jesus, is still speaking in the midst of all this holiness, just then this unclean spirit appears. But we don't get to hear from the man himself. The unclean spirit has pushed the man off to the side, and instead of hearing from the man, all we get to hear is the screaming and the shouting from the unclean spirit. And this unclean spirit would like to push Jesus off to the side as well. This unclean spirit doesn't want to let Jesus teach and speak the truth into the present. No. The unclean spirit can't have that. So the unclean spirit will use naming and labeling. The unclean spirit will slap a label onto Jesus. I know who you are, Jesus of Nazareth. You are the Holy One of God. In their culture, to name someone is to control them. It's like when we slap a label on someone today, once named, once you stick them with the label, then people stick you with all of their assumptions, all their prejudgments, the label, the naming is now attached to you. You're no longer a person. You're no longer able to define yourself. Someone else has done it for you. They've slapped you with the label, and you're no longer fully a person. You're just a category and a label. The strange thing is, this unclean spirit, the evil that has come, it knows exactly who Jesus is. This unclean spirit recognizes Jesus as the Holy One of God. But knowing Jesus doesn't mean that the unclean spirit likes Jesus. The unclean spirit then, just like unclean spirits now, they don't want Jesus who brings the kingdom of God present. The ways of evil don't want Jesus who speaks God into the here and now, who brings compassion and mercy and love for everybody. The unclean spirits don't want any of that. It would be better. It would be better for them to derail this whole conversation of Jesus. It would be better to start by slapping a label onto Jesus. Let's name him. Let's declare his title. Let's call him Holy One of God. And then it will get people's hopes up. Then. Once the label's applied, they'll forget about all of that message. They'll forget about the poor and the needy doing the things of God's justice and mercy. They'll start clamoring. They'll clamor for Jesus Christ superstar, and they won't do any of that stuff for the kingdom of God. The unclean spirit wants to use the label, the naming, as a method to silence the message. Jesus doesn't start an argument with the ways of evil. Jesus doesn't strike up a conversation with the unclean spirit. The ways of God are coming into the world 
It's not open for negotiation. It's here. It's now. God's ways have come and the kingdom, it's arriving and moving among us. God's way, compassion and kindness, mercy and justice, they are breaking into the world. Jesus is announcing them. Jesus is doing them. And no evil spirit, no naming or labeling can stop the work of God from coming into the world. So Jesus simply calls out and commands, be silent, come out. Jesus cast out the unclean spirit then, but the unclean spirits don't stay neatly in the past. The unclean spirits still come bursting in and they, they try to derail the message of God's kingdom even today. Jesus is still speaking God present into our time, right here, right now. God cares for the hungry, the poor, the lost, and the forgotten. God cares for the little children, for the ones without documentation, for those who are damaged or broken or weak. God says to the least of these, you, you are a child of God. Each of you and all of you, there's good news for you. But those unclean spirits come and they try to push the person off to the side. Never mind God's grace and love and mercy. Let's instead start slapping labels on people. By naming them and blaming them, we can turn people against each other. And so even now, we let evil, we let the unclean spirits speak. These unclean spirits that Jesus has already defeated, these unclean spirits that Jesus already cast out, we're giving them room to talk. But rather than naming and blaming each other, Rather than turning against each other, we need to learn how to name the demons and the unclean spirit that keep pushing humans aside. There are unclean spirits th that are making us afraid of each other, turning us on each other. They are the unclean spirits of racism and sexism, classism and religious intolerance, violence and hatred, greed, and materialism, we still fall victim to all these things. All because I think we struggle with one big demon. We struggle with the demon of unbelief. It's hard to believe in a God that we cannot see. It's hard to trust and believe that God is present in that other person, especially when the other person seems different from us. Unbelief is that nagging fear that maybe, maybe really nothing can be done or that there is no hope left in the world. But friends of Jesus, Hope is here, hope is real, and hope has a name, and the name is Jesus. Jesus came not because we're perfect, but because God still loves us. In spite of all the challenges, in spite of all the difficulties, in spite of all the times when we have turned on each other and even turned on God, God still loves us and wants us to live. Tell the unclean spirits. Tell all the unclean spirits. Be silent. The kingdom of God has come. Amen.
guided by Christ who has been made known to us and to the nations. We offer our prayers for the church, the world, and for all people who are in need. God of love, guide your church so that we use our freedom in Christ with grace and humility. Do not let us be puffed up with knowledge or arrogance. Instead, with our hearts full of compassion, turn us toward those who are weak and who need our care. Work in us and through us to lift them up and to show them your love. God of majesty, you have woven your whole creation together in a beautifully interconnected tapestry of life. You have placed us within this good creation. Help us to see and understand that our lives are drawn from the earth and that we must also give back to the earth for the well-being of all. God at work in the world, drive out the unclean spirits that invade people and nations. Set us free from our hatred and our fears. Cleanse us of our racism, sexism, and classism, our selfishness and greed, and our trust in weapons, violence, and war. Make us listen, truly listen, to Christ's teaching, because he comes with authority. God who renews, show up for your people who are hurting. Wherever there is pain, bring comfort. Where there is fear, bring assurance. Where there is sadness, bring hope. And where there is sickness, bring healing. We remember especially all those we name to you. Let your great works be shown to them. God, who is truly with us on the way, walk with and guide this congregation as we gather for our annual meeting. Fill us with hope, with direction, boldness, and a spirit of cooperation as we serve you and live out the gospel of Jesus Christ in the coming year. God of life, help us to trust that we stand in the company of all your saints. The generations before us did your kingdom work. Now unite us in that same mission so that your kingdom comes and your will is done on earth as in heaven. God of mercy, hear the prayers of your people offered in the name of the one who has come among us, Jesus Christ, your son, our savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.